our heroes were literally about to face off against um, minions of, you know, those that had once been turned to stone. Um, whoop, sorry, saved the book. Just tried to fall off my table. Um, and I guess we should go ahead and maybe roll some initiatives. How does that sound? You might not oh. need them, but maybe you will. Yay! Out of van, true to form with a three. <laughs> oh. oh. Jane wow. with eleven. Wow. Very with the shitty initiatives Marlo already. Marlo pulling off a Very twelve. Busted. Let's go ahead and see how James Beecham can fare um, in all of this. And he just uh, massacres them all. There's got to be a song about James Beecham by the end of this. <laughs> Let's see. And James is going to chime in with... Oh, look at ah! that. 24. There's my 20. Uh, <laughs> all right. And I'm going to roll... Comp I'm going to roll for the uh, NPCs collectively. So they all attack us at once. <laughs> Just because it's easier. And I'll give them an average of the initiative. And they are on. Okay. Mother... Yes, book. Everyone Sorry, I got scared because I saw the 20 get rolled and I thought that was them for some reason. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> All right. Yeah, for laggy, roll 20. Um, so seeing them all charge forward, um, Beecham is up on the cliff. He actually goes first. Um, Beecham is going to draw his rapier, kind of crouch down, poised to be ready to see if he needs to jump down. And... Hollows to Radovan. What do we do? Do we do we defend ourselves? No, yes. oh, we let them kill us. <laughs> so you say yes? Okay, with that. No, then, I, 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 I. Wait, well, Oh, I didn't know you wanted the actual response. Well, when you went like that, I assumed that that's what you were okay. doing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. We want this to be peaceful, but to defend yourself if we have to. <laughs> okay, in that. Case, I'm gonna shout. Listen. Uh, in that case, Beecham is like going to lower himself down and drop off the edge of the cliff of the of the you know the little raised days, uh, but is not going to attack. Okay, Marlo, you're up. So I'm going to shout, "Listen!" And behind my back, I'm going to take out the rattler and I'm going to shake it as loud as I can. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so I take out the rattler and I shake it and I'm telling, "Listen, listen." Alrighty, let's. Um, so the rat, what she's talking about is she's actually got one of the tails of one of the Medusa that kind of had like a rattlesnake tail. Um, so what we're going to do, let me just take this over here. I need a key. There. Okay. Um, all right. Let me move this. Okay. See so with your earballs. There we go. Roll 20 is being a little bit slow. Um, give me an intimidate check. Because that's what I'm going to cover that is intimidation. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Too bad it couldn't have been something else. Okay. <laughs> Are you not the most intimidating person in the world? A 13. Okay. And I want to queue up. Where is the tension? Yeah, the sound is bugged on my roll twenty. I can't hear anything. Oh, you might Sad. want to refresh then. I did. Still nothing. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, hope hope no sound effects are necessary then. Um, all right, with a thirteen. Um, so you do that. Um, several like the two warrior types that are charging towards you and the dwarf, who is kind of between Kia and Radovan, they momentarily like hesitate like. Because obviously they recognize the sound. Um, it stops them just like momentarily in their tracks. But then they kind of like look back over the shoulder at the wizard. Whose face looks really, really intense. And they're like continuing to try to press on their attack. Um, Jane. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, sorry. It wasn't very good intimidate. 
All right, so then I'm gonna try to say, everybody, please. I'm I'm in the air too, so I probably look like this beautiful elven something floating in the A air. Beautiful elven something. <laughs> 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 so I'll try to call attention to them and say, please put down your weapons. It's safe. Um, okay, give me a diplomacy check. <laughs> diplomacy. Oh my no. god. <laughs> You're not trying to scare... Why would much a diplomacy check? Because you were trying to scare them into stopping. She's trying to persuade them. That's but the I wasn't difference. trying to make them scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> 18. Okay. Um, that's a pretty reasonable diplomacy. That's, okay, that's they, they stop... They kind of, you know, as they were charging forwards, they've like stopped mid-track. They still have their weapons poised and raised and in a threatening manner, but it doesn't look like they're actually ready to it or they're going to attack. Can I keep talking then? Um, You can. You have six seconds. Oh. (laughs) I'll just say, please, we're safe now. The enemy is dead. Okay. Um... With that, as I said, these NPCs have stopped. I'm going to go ahead and continue to move these ones. Okay. Who were not aware that Beecham had jumped off the edge. So they were kind of going around in a flanking thing. Okay, so the one at the back, the one where the wizard wearing the green robes, who's got his hand outstretched holding his staff, he says... Who are you? To which of us? Um, probably collectively. Okay. How are we supposed to answer that? He's not going to know who we are. (laughs) Well, whose whose turn is it? Can we just answer? (laughs) I'd answer if it was my turn. I mean, Um, well, it's it's technically speech is a free action, so anyone can answer. Okay. What year is it? To you, we are we are friends. We saved you. You were turned to stone, to stone, and we review, we revived you. We are not violent to you. We cleared this this cavern of the threats. What Did year I start is it? A... What year is it to us? What year what is it to you? Yeah, is it to you? What year is it? Year, it's year nine oh eight. Let's go in a circle. Let's everyone say what okay. year when, they think it is. When you say it's year 908, the two warriors standing in front of you both kind of like look at each other somewhat surprised. Um, the wizard at the back doesn't seem particularly in shock or anything like that. He says, hmm, you were not affected by the denizens of this cavernous hall. Is that correct? Well, Mar- my friend Marlo here fought them off while, while blindfolded, and we just averted our gaze. We, we, did, we refused to look at them. You slew the remaining two sisters. Is that what they were? <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> there were two of them. I'm going to Mar- show them the Rattler. There the were rattler. three when we first arrived, some... According to your reckoning, some 12 years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> Welcome we only... back. <laughs> Wait, what a... All of you? These are acquaintances of mine, yes. I was the instigator of this exhibition. At which point, the dwarf over to the side says, I'm not one of them. Don't know who the bloody hell this lot is, but uh, I'm going the fuck home. <laughs> uh, what is what is what is your name, Sir Dwarf? Because we come from Kerbarak. Oh, you do. Um. Yes, uh, my name. Wolfric. Wolfric <laughs> Greybeard. Just, I am totally up. doing an insight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we... we lying. I would do sense motive as he did that. <laughs> okay. Wow. We're all expecting him to lie to us now. Well, you just told him you came from Carrot Ver- Okay. Um, yeah, that's uh, why. So, uh, sense motive of 14. <laughs> Shit. 16. Um... Well, first, yeah, it's it's definitely suspicious that someone should have to pause and hesitate to think of their name. Um, it's a fair assumption that he probably 
is either not telling the truth about his name or is was somewhat taken aback whenever you said Kervarak, who knows? But there, there's like definitely cast- a sense of um <laughs> possible insincerity on his behalf. I would like to cast suggestion on him, if that's okay. <laughs> Alrighty. I believe I have it. I can display it here. There it is. Uh, wow, it is <laughs> lagging. Holy hell. Yeah, it is. Okay. Alright, um... You cast Suggestion. As your spell goes off, in response and panic, you suddenly see the other wizard like... <gasps> Jeez, come and, on! Um, you just res- you just eat a lightning bolt for thirty-two okay. points. Your suggestion oh. goes oh, off, finicky bitch. Um, but you got lightning bolted for thirty-two. You can try to reflex right. save for half. That's fine. Okay, uh, he reflex. definitely saw that as a threat. <laughs> <laughs> reflex. Oh, actually, um, let me correct that. Okay. Um, thirty-two. Plus, I, I got that wrong. Um, you got to add 11, so it'd be 43. Um, and your reflex save was 21. Okay, so you save for half, so you take 22 points of lightning bolt damage. Okay. Um, I would probably try to tackle the wizard. Oh boy. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, oh. So that was kind of. Just of go you know, he, I don't know he, why he lightning bolted her at this point. So. Well, I mean, she you basically you see Kia start doing this and throw her hands up, and as soon as he sees that, he's like <gasps> and responds. Like so he literally took that as a you know, he didn't know what she was doing, but in a defensive scenario, he was not prepared to wait to see. <laughs> Yoki jumped when that <laughs> when that <Aww>. lightning bolt. <laughs> okay, um so let me hey, make a Yoki. willpower save for the dwarf. Um, the DC for your spell is, let's see, what is your DC level for that? Do you know, Jane? Be a level for plus, what? third level spell. Oh, um, so it's third 15, level 16, so you're level 15 17. plus 3, 15, 16, 17, 18, plus your dex modifier, right? Oh. I mean, not your dex modifier, your charisma modifier. It's 4. So 21. Really? <laughs> uh, I'm looking at my spell DCs and it says third level 17. 17, um, yeah. It's 17. Is that right? Is it? Yeah, it's a third level spell. I think. Right, but she's level. <laughs> don't for. Oh, hang on. No, you're right. You're right. With her decks. 15. Confused. He failed okay. anyway. Okay, so he is under the effects of the suggestion spell. Um, the second that hits, you get struck by the lightning bolt. Okay. Um. Seeing that, the um, other two warriors are spurred into reta- into like reaction. Um, so both of them are standing right there, and they slash towards um, Marlo, I guess, because she's the only. Actually, um, I'm gonna roll a dice. One or two, the top one goes for the dwarf. Three or four, he goes for Marlo, because there he doesn't know the dwarf from Adam either. Yep, he's going to attack the dwarf. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, he lunges at the dwarf, stabbing him with his longsword. Jeez, (laughs) this got out of control (laughs) really fast. Um, The dwarf taking 14 points of damage. As soon as he does that, Rannon Stormbeard... <laughs> what it is? Pulls, his, you know, just whips around with his axe and prepares to waylay back. And um, the other one is going to attack Marlo. And he hits. Oh, asshole, Goki, what? <laughs> um, for sixteen points of damage. All right, um, Radavan. Well, seeing that, I'm immediately going to do um, a bull rush on the one that attacked the dwarf. Okay. And as I do this, you know, as I do my bull rush, knocking him back, I'm going to be like, stop! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> With my weapon, weapon Ouch, rage, Charlie, the shield that rage. really hurt. 
Okay. So the one guy with the, stop it. Stop, stop it, damn it. <laughs> so I do a bull rush, so do I have to... Uh, yep, go ahead and do it. Uh, what is it? Uh, you're making a grapple, basically, right? Yeah, that's what I... Right. All right, yep, <laughs> you managed to knock him to the ground, um, and if you wish, you can pin him. I am going to pin him. All right, okay. With my shield between me, and I'm just going to hold him there. Hold him there. All righty. Um, Beecham, seeing everything kick off, is going to attack the one directly in front of Marla. <laughs> oh, no, you shit. <sighs> And hits him once. For Stop it. ten. <laughs> okay. Um Marlo, what do you want to do? I'm gonna say Beecham wait and I'm gonna attempt to clothesline the one that Beecham just attacked. <laughs> um as in to try to do a trip? Yeah, just to try to knock him knock him down like right of end did. Okay, well, yeah, you, you can either use your trip attack, um, or you can bull rush him and try to knock him to the ground. It's your choice. Uh, I'm not going to take the time to take out my weapon to try to trip him. So. Okay, so you just want to bull rush him? Okay, give me a grapple check then. Because technically it's not a bull rush because you don't have the range to do it, but you can still grapple. Uh, 23... Plus, oh, I'm forgetting to add there. That was still... I forgot to add their bonus, but that would still be enough. Okay. Um, you want to pin him? Yeah. <laughs> so I can get thunder bolted by the okay, so Pikachu. Okay, so Radovan the... has pinned one <laughs> of the warriors. Um, Marlo has pinned the other. Jane, what do you want to do? Well, since I have a suggestion on this guy, I'll... You're very quiet, oh. Jane. Oh, can you not hear me, Allison? Uh, I can hear you. Hear you. You're just it quiet. sounds like you're far away from the mic. No. <laughs> um, okay, how about if I just talk really loudly? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I Since I cast a suggestion, I'm going to say, Ranan, come stand out of harm's way and do not engage in this fight. Um, that's pretty fe That's pretty um, reasonable. Reasonable, okay. right? <laughs> yeah, so he is going to do exactly that. He comes and stands over next to you. Um, okay. And uh, as I said, it's a very, very reasonable suggestion. So uh, I don't think. And he answered to his name that I guessed. <laughs> hey, well, there you go, right? <laughs> um, it is their turn. Okay. Um, out of the ceiling, as the wizard waves his hands once more, a wall of solid iron goes. <laughs> oh my uh, god! And separates you guys on that side from the wizard. Um, it goes all the way to the ceiling um, and crosses the entire plane of this part of the cavern. Um, with that, you are suddenly aware of people dropping in from the ledge above. The first one is going to attack Beecham. And we'll hit Beecham from behind. Oh, that's not a thing. That should have been plus eight. Okay, so that's Beecham is hit for ten. Uh, let me see. Kia was hit for twenty-two. Okay, um, and then these other two that drop down here. One of them will be attacking Marlo. This is a rear attack. And that's a miss. And the other one, we're going to roll randomly. One or two Beecham, three or four Marlo. We'll divide them up. Um, Beecham, sorry, dude. <laughs> sorry, Beecham. Sorry, James. Um, but does not hit him. All right. Um, so, yeah, you've got suddenly these other guys that have come up around the ledge. They've dropped down onto your side to engage. Um, Radovan. Um, your one is struggling and will try to break the grapple. So um, on his turn, you need to make a grapple check with him if you're gonna if you want to pin him. Okay. Um, in the meantime, oh, you want me to do that now? We're doing that now. Twenty-four. Okay. Uh, 
Ouch. Uh, okay, so yeah. On his turn, he actually manages to throw you off. Alright, so I'm like over here. Yep. Okay. Um, Marlo, he's going to do the same. So if you want to continue to try to pin your guy down, you need to beat a grapple of 22. Ooh. So close. Nope, he manages to weasel out from underneath you as well. Alrighty. Um, it is... Let's see. Radovan's turn. So yeah, he's kind of he pushes you, he flips you, kind of like flips you off of him, and he's gonna. Where, you know, where's the dwarf? Um, the dwarf is over here, calmly standing, watching everything happen next to Eliana. <laughs> and and the who is this guy who became undone too? He is on the he, other side of the massive iron wall that's between but you did and he, him. Did he ever say anything or do anything, or he just? Was this kind of with the wizard? That he is the wizard. You well, there's about this other this guy. Yeah, this guy right next to the wizard. Oh, I forgot him. I completely <laughs> <Yeah>. forgot that <laughs> dude. I didn't <laughs> I see him. Like, I thought he was a rock. <laughs> he looks Where's like a rock. Him? Actually, you, give me a second. Said... I forgot to. I forgot to turn him back from. He was stone, um, and he's supposed to be not stone. But guess what? He. Still is stone. Um, let me <laughs> fix that. <laughs> didn't work on him. Right. Oh yeah, didn't it not work on like a couple people? No, it worked on everybody. It worked on everybody, but there were a couple that oh. you didn't do because you oh. assumed yeah, that yeah. they were yeah. probably dubious. Let's see, where is it? There, okay, let me get rid of that. Go ahead and put him in. <laughs> Welcome to the fight. <laughs> yep. I, uh -oh. I guess he was just in like shock and awe and surprise and alarm the entire time. Didn't know what he was. Didn't know what to do. He suddenly snapped out of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he is on that side as well. Okay, Radovan, what do you want? So I'm I'm going to get up, and because of this ag newfound aggression, I am going to do a full attack on the guy I had pins, and I'm gonna. As I do this, I'm going to say, you fucking asked for it, because we were willing to be peaceful. <laughs> okay. So. So you use your, your standard action, you use your move oh action. Oh my god, up. the fumble is painful. Wow. wow. <laughs> um, and I'm sure I still don't have... Oh my god, my rolls. ...that working, do I? Well, I rolled... Best. I don't. I rolled a... I rolled a 15, so it's not horrible. No, but. it wasn't bad. Um, but it should have calculated that. Alrighty, yeah. but it doesn't matter. Um, yep, you hit twice. That's 22 points of damage to that one. Two solid blows with your mace. Alright, um, back to the top of the round. Beecham. Seeing that he has two people but suddenly behind him, Beecham is going to spin around and make both attacks um, on them. He will well land done, <laughs> two blows. So that's 2d6 plus 12. Um, doing 18 points of damage to that one. All right. Um, Marlo. Merlo. Everybody has <laughs> gone mad. We don't want you. We just want the dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to actually shout at it, though. Okay. And I'm going to take a step back with to attempt to... You want to make a disengage action? Oh, well, Beecham's right behind me. Never mind. I'm oh, going to take if a... You, if you step back that way, he is, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to step back against the cement wall that... The what's iron wall? Okay. put up. Yeah, that. Alrighty. And I guess hold my action, because all I want to do is shout at them. Okay. Um, Jay Nirvana. Uh, which one is um, acting the most aggressive right now? Is the Pretty one that Ryan's fighting? I mean, all it's of them. yeah. As soon as you started casting a spell, the wizard retaliated, <laughs> and then all hell broke loose. <sighs> all right. 
And you know what, I think it's pretty safe to say that this has definitely turned into <laughs> a scrap, so yeah. we'll turn the combat music on instead. Um, <laughs> okay, Jane, what do you want to do? Um, I'm going to fire an empowered magic missile at... Is this a bad guy? He looks like a bad guy. Absolutely, yeah. He's he, he's definitely a bad guy. He's got a mean looking face. <laughs> and him saying, "Damn it all to hell!" For twenty <laughs> points of damage. All right. Empowered though. The so. blue ball. So if it's empowered, um, and you rolled, yeah, I should have not done away with the dice. How many dice did you roll? I rolled five dice. So we take fifth, take five off of that. So that's actually fifteen. So rounded, that's another eight. So twenty-eight points of damage. All right. Empowered. Alrighty. Um, the NPCs. Um, well, the first thing that happens is we've got two guys right here. So this one is going to attack Radavan because Radavan's right there. This one's still going to attack Marlo. Okay, they didn't stop. No, they didn't now stop, I gotta, unfortunately. Now I gotta slap a bitch. Alright. So, um, yeah, you can still <laughs> retaliate. Um, as soon as they attack, as soon as you were holding your round, um, you yeah, can still um, go ahead I and make your I am going to action. do that. Is... Yeah. Alright, so Ranavan, one do you... First yeah. one, Koki. your one swings at you with his longsword. Uh, 23. Yeah, that's a hit. That's that L hit a Rooney. Alright. Um, giving you a nasty gash of 12 points of damage, sir. <laughs> you are turn mellow. Right. Um, let's see. Who else do we have here? Um, Marlo, you have one. You have two. So the first one and the second one. That's an 18 Oops. and a 26. So the 26 hits for ow, 16 Ooh. points of wow. damage. He's got some talent. Uh, and then the other two attack Beecham. Ooh. Oh, fumble. And a 24. That's a hit for 15 for Beecham, so that's 25 total he's taken. How much damage have you taken total, Marlo? Uh... It was 16, and then what was the one before that? I can't remember. It was another 16, I think. I'm at 28, if that's what you're, you're asking. You're on 28? Yes. So, and you're normally on what? 71. Is that Damn. including my extra HP boost? No. So that's a, that's another. Because that's gonna come off first. That's so. another twenty-eight. Yeah. Okay. So if you had that twenty-eight point bonus and you've taken a total of thirty-two, so you're actually only down four points, right? Right, but she's gonna lose that anyway if the spell expires. So. Oh well, yeah. Plus, but, yeah, it's Barry's endurance, not. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to figure out how many hit points she's actually on. I'm trying to keep track of everything. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I never understood how that worked, so I've just been... Um, you just... Initially, what you do is you add it to your total hit points, and then when the spell expires, you deduct it from your total hit points. So it's just 28 extra hit points that you yeah. get. So you had 28 more than you did have at the start of the fight. Alrighty. Um, okay, Marlo, so you want to go ahead and use your held action to attack this guy? Yeah, the one that hit me. Okay. And I'm gonna do it non-lethal. Non-lethal? Alrighty. I really don't want to kill these people. I don't. Know that... <laughs> I don't either. But. But I casted a spell and they went nuts. <laughs> so the guy that's that hit me, I'm not flanking him, right? Um. No. All right. We have people standing all around me. So. Yeah, but unfortunately, the person on the other side of you, or the other side of him, is one of his. Right. Players, I mean, so. I mean, like I have people standing all around me. I wasn't sure which one attacked me. <laughs> uh, it would be this dude here. Ooh. Okay, gosh damn it. Eighteen. Okay. Um, that's. Wow. Okay. Ten. Tw well, yep. Um. You open up a massive can of whoop ass on this guy. Um, a solid left, a solid right, an uppercut followed by a spinning hook kick sends him flying across the floor with a gratifying crunch. He's done. 
Um, he's, it was non-lethal, so he's just knocked out. Yeah, right? he is KO'd. <laughs> Damn. Who's next, bitches? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was pretty uh, pretty harsh. Um, wow. There you go. He can have a timer. He's unconscious. All right, good job. Um, all right, so the last thing's going on. So now, all of a sudden, the wall is going to drop. Um, apparently, the wizard doesn't care who he hurts. And everybody Yikes. up to there. So that's everybody except the dwarf. You may make a reflex save. So this is also in the air, too? So um, yeah, because confirm. the thing all, all right. goes all the way to the ceiling, so... I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> reflex save? Yep, reflex right. save. Come on, 20. <laughs> Ouch. Marlo is safe. <laughs> Not Rada, man. Oh, shit. Um, oh, ouch. Ouch. Oh. Um, Here we go. And um, I guess I'm going to roll for Beecham. And I'm going to roll for all of them, too. I'm glad the dwarf won't get hurt. <laughs> you, you might die. Uh, I won't die. All right, oh, much healthier good. one. And I'm going to roll collectively for all of the guys, just because. Remember, you completely healed okay. me. <laughs> so Beecham throws himself, like, against the wall. Well done, Beecham. Um, like, there's like a little nook that's there, and Beecham throws himself into it. In order to evade this, Marlo's pretty much going to have to do the same. So I'm going to move Marlo. Like, she leaps over to here and kind of like presses herself into this crevice against the wall. Um, the wall crashes down. Ah! If you are under the wall, this is how I'm much damage you take. <laughs> Beecham only takes half. How many hit points are you on, Kia? I'm on uh, 54. Okay, you you sh might survive then. Okay, um, oh, this much damage is for everybody except Beecham and Marlo. 27. Thanks. Uh, Marlo takes none of it. Jeez. Um, all of the other guys take damage. That vanishes. Um, he is dead. He's crushed under his master's spell. Um, Beecham takes 11. Well, so much for that non-lethal damage there, buddy. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> this guy is officially... He is now upgraded to dead because he just got crushed. The wall um, disappears after it crashes, right? Yes. Or Okay. And you crazy bastard! Every other dude is on... Um, very, very bad damage. <laughs> They're all hurt really badly. Okay. Um, this guy, who has yet to act, um, he is going to do... One second. Let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. Make sure I get the numbers right. Everything's being really slow tonight for some reason. So, the, what are you doing? So the, the two that are red right here, I'm probably going to shout to them, if you want to live, I suggest you leave, because your guy is not a, not opposed to friendly fire. Okay, give me a second. All of these guys, after the finger wiggling from that guy, all of these guys suddenly look considerably better. Hmm. From this guy? Yep. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Dang it. Uh, why is... Oh, because I didn't remove his, um... Didn't remove his red dot. Get your red dot out of the way. Okay, yeah, he just, uh... 
You see him wave his arms and raise his hands to the ceiling, and suddenly, like a shimmering glow, like of, of kind of like a not like Radavans, but more sort of like a dull gray fog and mist bathes over those guys, and their wounds seem to dissipate quite considerably. Um, it is Radavan's turn. After almost being crushed by a three-inch thick iron wall that just fell on him. <laughs> I'm honestly going to... So, I'm going to get up, because I, I imagine I fell down uh-huh. with the wall crush me. Use the rest of my movement to get to this guy. I will take an attack of opportunity from the green dude. I don't care. And so I'm going to stand use... up as a move action, and then you want to use the another moves to get to. Well, him. no, the, it's it's a half move action, right, to get up from a prone position. Yes. So I have thirty feet. So I okay. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Okay, moves, yeah, I'm with you. And then I'm going to use my strength domain to whack this fucker in the head because <laughs> I want to kill these guys now. They deserve it. <laughs> okay. So it's a single attack, but I'm going to hit them as hard as I can. All right. <laughs> Brain him. Ooh, that's a. It rolled, oh, there's a, oh, it rolled <laughs> the extra twenty just in case. All right, just you looking. smack him for eighteen points of damage. All right, good solid blow. Um, back to the top would be Beecham. He is gonna. St- Press forward now, jumping into this position here, but like to the side of this guy and attack <laughs> twice. DRC's finally home and he solved the cat problem. Yay! Um, that's two hits. I hear, I hear a aerosol can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, take two off of each of those. Um, so he hits him for eight and eleven. All right, that puts him back to moderately wounded. All righty, um, Marlo. Uh, I don't know why we're killing all these people. <laughs> uh, I, I'm gonna <laughs> to these other people. You need to get out of here because your guy's fucking insane. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna charge or rush the wizard. Okay. You try to make a grapple attack on the wizard? I'm gonna straight up try to kill the wizard. Okay. So you should <laughs> move actions, really go over wheels. there, and then you can make your regular attack. You can't flurry a bros, but you can do the, uh, you can make your attack. <laughs> Is it, he obviously has no regard for his own people, so he, he deserves death. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, we'll say that. <laughs> death for all. No cake for him. <laughs> Doesn't deserve cake, gets death. Ow! <laughs> um, two hits. Okay, you hit the wizard for 15. All right. Um, Jane Ivana. That's me. All right. Um, I just got hit, right? This is um, the, you my took turn. 22. 20, so, 20. so 32 right. concentration if you want to cast a spell. No, thanks. I'm just going to use my turn. Um... And of course, you're on the ground now. Sure, I'm gonna use my turn to get back towards the ceiling. <laughs> okay, you float back up. That's it, and prepare spell. Just ready it for the next turn. <laughs> Alrighty, their turn. Okay, um, let me go ahead and Let's see. Yes. Alrighty. Um, the cleric is going to attempt a casting check. So, Radavan, you hit him for 18, 18. so he needs a 28. Twenty-eight or higher, and he gets a thirty-one, so he succeeds. 
But I'm in range. Do I get a melee attack on him? Uh, you do, his... sir. And touch attack, a touch effect. So he touches you. Uh, okay. With twenty one. And there's there's the attack for casting in my range. Uh, which hits does a eleven points of damage to him. So at what least does he, he do to me? At least he doesn't get away without taking any damage from doing it. Alrighty. It's like an inflict wound or something. Ouch. Nah. <laughs> that's way too feeble. <laughs> inflict like critical wounds. Something. Right. something painful. So that is a total of that. All right. You receive 31 oh, points God. of Are you st- Are you evil so unholy it? damage as his as he grabs hold of you and the sheer filth of his unholy deity drains the life from you for 31 points. All righty. Um, so these are good people. Got it. <laughs> the wizard who took <laughs> 15 from Marlow? He needs to do a 22, a 25 caster check. He's 25 or higher. I get to attack. 22. Him. He fails, so he does not get his spell off. I get to punch him in the face for that. Um, you <laughs> can. You get to make a single attack. Yes. Yay! <laughs> Don't cast spells on me. <laughs> <laughs> you little bitch! <laughs> uh, for ninety, oh, there's only six. That you know what? Six it's 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 something. Once again, it's a it's a moral victory when they get to ca- <laughs> when it's their turn and you get to do damage to hey, them. Hey, right? stop it! <laughs> um, let's see what have we got that here. Uh, well, you guys have all bailed over there, so Beecham has got all three of these to deal with. Oh my gosh! I wanted them to run away. Damn it! What? That's what I get for thinking they're not evil. Okay. Alright, we got three of them against Beecham, so. One, two, three. Um, that was a crit which was confirmed. Ow. And oh, then the damn last it. one. Um, Beecham, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so Beecham is hit three times, one of which is a crit. Um, so slash R 4d8 plus. 32. No. Plus. <laughs> what? 8 times 3, 60, 24. Because you don't get the bonus twice. Okay, Beecham. Alright, 34 points of damage. Um, you literally see them all just jump on Beecham and start stabbing. He falls to the ground under a flurry of. Um, waved attacks of various different sword blows and you see him collapse to the ground with them vibrantly stabbing over top of him as he does so like shh, shh, shh. oh now I feel like shit now. and he collapses um surely under the pressure um uh, Marlo it is your turn okay I'm oh gonna... no it isn't it's still that was their turn right yeah, so yes. it's Kia, right? No, uh, no, um, Radavan's next. I oh, yeah. am doing a full attack on this bastard, unaware on of what's happening to I can't PG. believe you're attacking the clergy. Fuck the clergy. <laughs> kill it. I'm gonna try to He's kill him. He's an unholy him. clergy. Saint Cuthbert will shoot to smite him. The power of Saint Cuthbert. Uh, you Do hit him it. twice for eighteen. Yeah. Fuck. Alrighty. Mack him in the mouth. <laughs> Try. Let me go ahead and give him a an injury token. There you go. Um, I'll go ahead and mark the wizard as well. Uh, no, actually, let me rephrase that. That's just enough to go to there. 
All right. Um, Beecham is out. He is not making any attacks. He is down. Marlo. So you are there toe-to-toe -to -toe with the wizard. We're going to unload on the wizard so that okay. I can get over to Beecham. Okay. Yeah, do it, Marlo. Unload. <laughs> on the whiz. Kill him. Hey! Oh, oh, look at the crits. I was 18. I'm thinking they're 20s. They're, no, they're so 18. Exciting. Um, okay, yeah. You, in a fit of controlled anger, I guess, punch, kick, annihilate, and butcher the wizard. He is easily killed. You kind of like, you know, hit him with a back fist, followed by a reverse punch. And then you kind of grab him, knee him in the stomach, flip around, grab hold of his neck, and then break his neck over your shoulder. He hits the ground in a slump. Dead. Am I close enough to cleave to the cleric? I'm going to say yes. If I say yes. Marlo's pissed. Don't fuck with the monk. Man. Yep, Don't you fuck can with get the a, monk. You can get a cleave attack on the cleric. You down this guy, so um kill the cleric. Kill just get rid of him because I need to heal some shit. <laughs> I can't take any more damage, damn it. <laughs> um, oh, it would only be the top one, but you hit the player for 10. Bumble. All right. Um, Jay Nirvana. Hello. Hello, Jane. From the heavens. Hello, Jane. How are you? Good, uh -huh. thank you. From the heavens, you see a ch chain lightning bolt strike this guy, and I would like it to go Which to... Which one? Striking this guy, the okay. top one. And then you're gonna ricochet it to the other two? Gonna ricochet it. nope. Yeah, that one, that one, and looks like I could get that one too. Well You don't think so? No. Nope. Well, uh we've gotta move Well no, yeah, yeah, because Marlo was attacking from this side. She's yeah, I would say that's probable. Okay. He's within range, okay. Um let me he make it. Well, actually, regardless, well, no, that might they might save, they might save. So let me see if they save. Okay. Tally ho! And the first one, seventeen is the DC. So he just saves for half. So he only takes six level twenty-six. Should be, a, should be a twenty DC. What is the level of the spell? It's a level six. It should be though. higher than that. Yeah, it's twenty. I'm gonna delete that. You, you need to sure fix right that. There. You need to fix that. Um, in which case he didn't Jane. save, and that case hey. he is dead. DC. Sure All right, DC. and the other two next to him pass Oops. and a fail. So that will be twenty-two. He saved for half. So he actually only takes eleven. All right, which will still put him close to death. And that one failed, so he will take, puts him on moderate. And then let me roll for the cleric. And he only takes 11 as well. Well, All that's right. still a lot of damage he took that turn, so. Oh yeah, yeah, he ain't getting the spell off. Not without <laughs> rolling a 20. Um, let's see. It is their turn. Um, okay. These two... I'm gonna make a dice roll. Oh, wow. Look at that. Um, <laughs> you see a moment of, like, terror hit their face. And for a second, it looks like they're poised to run. Then they see the priest is still alive. And look at each other and think better of it. And basically, attack one attacks um, one attacks Radavan and one attacks Marlo. Marlo, you're missed. Radavan, you are also missed, sir. Okay, the cleric. Um, he is going to try to cast. Oh my god! I'm just so going to roll a d20, and unless it's a 20, <laughs> he can't. He's so if this fun. rolls a 20, 20, 20, he gets a spell off. If it's not a 20, he does not. Oh! oh close. <laughs> but I do get to hit him with the with the opportunity. You do. Because he tried to cast, yep. 
Uh, fuck. for 12. <laughs> I literally say fuck you when I try to hit him for the face. All right, yeah, he is um, seriously injured. Okay, um... <laughs> Radovan. Um... I am going... I didn't take damage, so I am going to... Cast defensively, so I'm... So I don't get opportunity attacks. Yep. To cast a 7th level spell, so I have to, um... It's It has to be moderately high, but I think I can do it. 28. So, what did you take? Uh, it's a it's a it's a uh, level seven spell that I'm trying to cast. Right. I cast it defensively, so seventh level, fifteen plus seven, so I passed it. Yeah. And I am casting cure critical wounds mass. All I'm doing right. the the big bastard, and I want to hopefully get Beecham to not be dead. <laughs> So everybody gets twenty five points. Allies get twenty five points, and yes, that will bring that will keep Beecham from dying. Oh thank god. He wasn't dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wasn't dead. He was on minus two. Um Alright. So, so Beecham is alive. Um you see him kind of like get up and look somewhat like hate dazed and he picks up his rapier and stands up and then like pushes himself over and like leans up against the wall just for a moment like he's trying to catch his breath. Uh, Marlo. Oh, you're muted. Are you muted? I tried to spare these assholes. You you tried. Um, so the one that's, that attacked me last turn, I'm going to unload on him and I'm going to be freaking vicious because he almost killed Beecham and I'm pissed about it. <laughs> Still no 20, 219. Wow. Jeez. Um, but yeah, I would say that's pretty vicious as you hit him four times. Okay. <laughs> you get a cleave too. Yeah, right? it's like a double palm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a double yes. palm strike to the chest, which like he drops his sword and seems to be stunned. And it's like jumps up and brings her elbow straight down across his jaw with a gratifying crack. And then as she kind of spins around, reaching backwards grabbing hold of his nether regions and you hear a <laughs> and what he was endowed with is now in Marlo's hand and he is dead uh, so many trophies use that for your cleave and yeah. you get a cleave gonna... attack on the one the next cleric. to him I'm gonna attempt to make him eat it. so you can cleave either one you can cleave the cleric or the other warrior <laughs> cleave with the balls with yeah the balls. I'm gonna go after the cleric Make sure that he doesn't get to me. <laughs> Eat, it. Eat it! Eat uh, it! Okay, okay, okay. It's Honey, only the first it, attack, it it's only a flurry. single attack. It wasn't supposed to be a flurry, though. No, but that's oh. alright. Still, you do 13 points okay. of damage. Okay, the cleric is 20. barely alive. He drops down to one knee. Um, as Marlo lashes out with a vicious sidekick, catching him in the stomach, and he collapses down onto one knee, like holding his, like, oh, and almost loses his lunch. Um, Jane. Um, Cal, go scratch him. <laughs> Are you want to let Cal out the bag? You want to let yeah. the cat out the bag for a change? Cal, go sting the cleric. He's near dead. All right. <laughs> Do a drive-by. <laughs> Do a fly-by. A fly-by scratching. <laughs> All right. Um, he is within Cal's movement rate. Okay, so uh, make an attack for Cal's pseudo-dragon tail. All Pseudo-dragon <laughs> tail. The tail of the dragon. <laughs> Claw, bite... I got a claw and a bite. We need to definitely update him tail. because I think his stuff oh, is God, yeah. way behind. I'm just going to roll a uh, 1d20 plus, to, plus his uh, melee, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. 
Well, you haven't used them in so long. Cause I know. <laughs> you don't ever use them, so I just... Ooh. Um, Ooh. That's good enough to hit. Okay. Um, so he has poison, a poison which has a 14 DC. Mm-hmm. 20. And we're going to roll for the cleric. And... He passes. <laughs> Okay. Um, so, does he take any damage or something? Yeah, does he take the damage for does D4. Sting? Okay. <laughs> can this kill him, Gore? It uh, can. Uh, he has two hit points. <laughs> okay. <Yay! laughs> Alright, um, it's actually... I take that back. I'm sorry. Oh, it's, it. A stinger is D3 minus two. It always does one damage. <laughs> So I'm sorry, Cal. You've, you're um, he's on one hit point. <laughs> so close, but yeah, I, sub- I, I looked it up and I was like, wait a second, I think that's a set damage. Yeah, it's always one. Always, always one. Always <laughs> one. Um, but hey, nice try, Cal. I wanted that to be epic. All right, it is their turn. Um, this dude right here is going to try to smack Radavan. Er. Uh, at this point, it's like there is. Oh, look at that! What a f- epic fumble. Okay, yep. Um, he raises his, ma- you know, raises his sword and slashes towards Radavan, who kind of like brings the sword up, or brings his shield up to the side without looking. His arm hits the shield. The sword goes flying out of his hand, over top of Radavan and lands behind him. Alrighty, um, cleric damage. What damage did he take this turn? Um, um, he actually only from Marlow, didn't he? Um, and one from 13. thirteen, so he has a twenty. Thirteen and one from Cal. So he's twenty-four. <laughs> but we, I think Marlow and me both get an attack on him. I don't think he's surviving. <laughs> nope, but he might. He so may or get, may a not spell get a spell off. off. Yeah. Which he does. <laughs> Lucky bastard. <laughs> okay, so uh, I've got a feeling this is his swan song. Um, cause he definitely isn't gonna survive this. Um, but it's, you know, he does get to do this on his way out. Um. Yikes. <sighs> What's the range? Windwall. <laughs> <laughs> 30 feet. Uh, okay. This will help me. <laughs> How far is Kia from him? Nope, that's everybody. Shit. <laughs> All of you will receive 33 Ow. points of damage. Everybody Does takes 33 unholy points of damage. It's not an AOE effect spell, so you can't you can't save or dodge it. Um, I believe. Let me double check. I might be wrong. Let me double check that. Freaking! If Cal could just do one more point of damage, <laughs> I should have done my stupid bite attack. Uh, nope, that's right. You can't. You just, take it. You just eat it. Okay. Um, so everyone's down no, no, thirty-three, no, 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 no. and now Ranavan and Marlow get to retaliate. My hit. There we go. <laughs> and I say, Cuthbert sends his regards. All right, so dick. Radavan smacks him with the mace, Marlon. Oh uh, sure, why not? <laughs> Even though he's dead, <laughs> I'm gonna like try overkill. to dip my uh, fist down his throat. <laughs> All right, so basically Marlow hits him in the stomach once more. His head goes down. Radavan smashes him on the back of the head, cracking his skull. No one really knows if he was dead before the mace landed or not, but in any case, he is now. (laughs) Yay! All right, what's everybody's hit points? I know some of you must be pretty friggin' low. Uh, Not that it really matters. Okay, this guy... um, He's gonna try and attack Radovan. This guy's still trying? Uh, Well, didn't he just try to attack me? He fumbles. So, um... Yeah, that was a, that was a reaction. He that's oh, that's sword. right. Yeah. Um, so actually, it's Beecham's turn. Beecham isn't doing anything. Because Beecham um, is unconscious again. <laughs> actually, no, he's not. Because he is fully conscious. He had a round. Beecham and he's pissed. So Beecham is going to charge over to this guy. <laughs> and oh, Beecham! 
No! Please. Hit him once. Oh my god. Okay. Forget it's a flank, right? So. Yep, and Beecham has to do eight points of damage to kill him. And Beecham does 12. Yeah. So Beecham finish this, runs this guy through from the back and finishes him off. Actually, if he's doing that from the back, it would have been way more damage than that. So in any case, yeah, Beecham jumps behind this guy and eviscerates him. As How the did last Beecham of manage these to dudes stay conscious? fall to the ground. I healed him for like... 25. Yeah. For 25, and then he took 33 again, so actually... Oh, actually, no, yeah. Um, I forgot Beecham, so no, Beecham won't do that. Because <laughs> uh, Beecham is down again. <laughs> that's yeah, that's right. why I was confused. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're right, you're right. I completely two. forgot I that. I completely forgot that. Okay, yep. um, so Beecham on his turn actually falls to the ground instead. Um, <laughs> so Marlo, it is your turn. All right. I'll, 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 it's okay, Beecham. I'll, I'll do my best to put him down for you, buddy. <laughs> I would say his chance of survival is slim to none. I could miss. What, four times? Yeah. Could miss four times. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you didn't actually miss once. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Lots of, lots of blows that probably end up with Marlo ripping his heart clear from his chest. And with that, Beecham! the last of them is dead. <laughs> and I am going to cast Cure Moderate Wounds Mass. So everyone gets 20 health. All right, and Beecham wakes up. <laughs> rises once more. <laughs> Sick of the <laughs> shit. <laughs> the poor Beecham must have a massive hangover. Yeah, Be Beecham is really probably going to have some kind of psychological um, problems after this. <laughs> I'm I'm actually gonna go to everybody that's down, and I'm just gonna hit them over the head so they're bloody pulps. I'm okay. just um, to growing, I'm making sure everybody doesn't come back because I am furious. I, well, you you make sure that all of them are definitely dead, um, leaving no <laughs> hope of survival for any of them. Um, during all of this, the dwarf has been watching, and he's like. Like you Indian. must have really not liked them. They were assholes. Beecham, are you okay? How many fingers am I holding up, buddy? Uh, he kind of looks at you and he's like, um, quite honestly, I don't know. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have left you with them. Oh, no, it's... I'm still alive, I think. <laughs> yeah, you're, um, you're a fighter. Yes, uh... You know, it was it was fine. Then all of a sudden, they just they all got the drop on me. You see, one from the left, one from the right, and I stumbled. And the next thing I know, they were all on top, and I, well, next I was unconscious before I realized it. I do. Beecham's gonna be the next Dean Winchester. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I am going I'm sorry to go. To let you all down. You didn't let me down. I'm just glad that you're okay. I, I'm burning through all my spells because we're all really hurt. Okay. And I'm going to do Cure Serious on myself, on Beecham, and on Marlo. Okay. So. And then, and then I'm going to kind of like lean back and. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right oh, yeah. Cure too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, no, no Cure Serious for your other friend? I'm kind of, I have no like high level spells, so no. But <laughs> <laughs> you, you will totally get two cure lights go through everything. Okay. Not just one spell for you, Kia. You get two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a total of nineteen points cured um, for Kia. All right. And then I'm just gonna like lean against a wall. He's just slumped to the yeah. ground. And Beecham kind of sits there next to you as he reaches into his backpack and um, pulls out a banana and peels it. <laughs> of course he has a banana. <laughs> he looks at Radovan and he says, Well, that's ingratitude for you, isn't it? I'm such an idiot, Beecham. I'm so sorry. Well, um, I mean, it's just like, we help them. We get in information out of them. and They fucking react this way. Shouldn't we tie up the dwarf... He's like, uh, I'm not one of them. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll just be off. 
The, no, uh, I wasn't I talking to you. I'm saving. sorry. I should have. I made it. Should have made it plainer. I was addressing my allies, not you. Kia, the scroll. <laughs> Show him the scroll. He might find interest in it. Remember, we're supposed to. <laughs> Wait, the one that's sealed. Yeah, he's, we're up? supposed to present it to. <laughs> oh right, right. <clears throat> Rannon, here you go. <laughs> Read oh, this. <laughs> Oh, okay. wait, I'm supposed to read it to him? I don't know. No, you're supposed to. We were supposed to bring you this. This is for you. And I'm oh, going to actually. Um, wait, 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 wait. I would like to send a. Do I have it? Message spell, I guess, to Radovan to just talk to him and say, uh, you should probably get on the other side. He might start running. I'm going to get up and start, like, lumbering across, down the wall, kind of leaning against it, because I'm very okay. fucking tired. Yeah. All right, you see him um, start reading it. Get out some rope. <laughs> As he starts pondering over it with a rather puzzled look, and he stops halfway, and like, looks at all of you. Hmm. <sighs> So, um, Dwindled Cargill gave you this, did he? The very same. And, uh, huh. <laughs> he kind of puts it down into, like, stuffs Gosh it down. Gosh damn it, into why didn't we read it? <laughs> and he says, well, um, Hats off to you. Apparently, there's quite a reward waiting for you for my uh, for my rescue. Really? For your rescue? Well, that's what it says. Yeah. You were sent uh, to rescue me by Dunagold Carlicle, my brother-in-law. Uh. What? Wait. We were told you were an oathbreaker. What by by Dunagond? the runesmith? No, he's my brother-in-law. <laughs> Everybody so Could we read your, your scroll, perhaps? Uh, it's in Dwarvish runes. You'd never understand it. I, I can read might, it to you if you like. No, I I can read Dwarvish. I'm a dwarf friend, as they say. Please. Well, you might be able to read Dwarvish, but these are in sacred rune letters. Oh, shit. Did I cast my heal spells with that shit? Because I have... Oh, Mo, I might have... Yes, I did. Totally did. <laughs> No. <laughs> I have comprehend languages and I use it for a heal on you, Kia. He says, and "Well, else now I'm not." Let me. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, well, wait, wait. You this see him kind of like fumbling around. He says, "Does any of you have any kind of parchment so that I can send back a reply?" Uh, no, you don't have to do that. We're taking you back with us. No, no, I'm not going back. But you'll be getting the reward. I just want to let him know that you did successfully rescue me, so that you receive your your reward. Uh, no, um, the order wasn't from him. Well, it, it was signed from higher by up him. Than him, and it has listen, his seal on the letter. Listen, you took a good half a second pretending to be someone else, and now you're claiming to be Rannon Strongstern. If you had told me and you were your friends of doing a gold cargo, I'd have. Happily, Listen, sir. Understood that you are allies. We're gonna have the to take you The marshal of the in. mountain sent us. That was the one that gave me the order. Well, then why does this have Dunagund Cargill's seal, and why is it signed by him? You'll notice that there are other know. seals on it as well. There were more than one seal. There's we did only a... one seal on it that I see. Of course, once somebody reseals a wax seal, of course you're not going to see the remainder of seals, but. I don't care either way what the letter says. I just know that I was told by the Marshal of the Mountain to bring you. So you can either come of your own free will, or we're just going to take you back. You're a, you're a handy bunch to be sure. I mean, you dispatch these neophytes, no problem. But, um, I did advise you to scrap somebody of my worth. I gotta be honest, sir. We were pretty much under the assumption we were going to have to fight you either way. Well, there's absolutely no reason to resort to violence with me. I've done you well, no wrong, awesome. and you've done that me. Well, that'd be awesome. That means none. we can get going. But uh, I have, unfortunately, a uh, very important business to attend to. I cannot be going back to Karakvark, yes. Not yet. Um, 
you Even were a statue. A... <laughs> we have important business. Right. So I'm way behind. <laughs> and what is this business you have that's so important? Well, that's dwarven business. I wouldn't like to Running? be sharing it with the likes of you. And that's fine because we have dwarven business as well, given to us by the Marshal of Mountains. <laughs> All right. He kind of like takes a step back in this direction and kind of puts his back a little bit closer to the wall. Oh, please do not do this. You will regret it. And he, he pulls Oop, I'm out, stepping basically up behind you see him, him like pull out an axe and it's suddenly the, the, the handle of the axe, like you see like and four rooms oh. blaze up the handle and then the axe head itself bursts into flames. As he like bows down on the axe and says, no. You may have been told by the so-called Marshal of the Mountain to come apprehend me, but the letter that I received from you is from Dunagund Cargill, saying that you were being sent to rescue me. Now, if that's the case, I'll write a letter of accommodation back and you'll each receive a thousand gold of Dwarven coin. Or we can tie into a tendy scrap right here, and I'm afraid that this axe of mine is going to have to put some of you down. Aye? You'll probably get me, but I'll guarantee I'll at least take two of you. I'm looking at Radovan over this guy's shoulder. Which I guess I could be over his head, because he's a dwarf. (laughs) I have taken out my shield and weapon. Can I do an insight check to see if he's lying about what's in the scroll? Um, you can make an insight. You can make a check. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know whether it's going to tell you if he's lying about what's in the scroll or not. Just if he... Okay, is it not called insight? No, it's not. What is it again? A sense motive. <laughs> you want sense oh, yeah. motive. <laughs> That's 5e. All right. Five. All right. Just ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Le- no, go ahead. While Red Event's talking, I wish to do something, though. All right. Well, he's kind of like, with you being the closest, he has kind of got his shoulder facing in your direction with his axe is kind of raised and semi-ready. Listen, the last thing we want to do is for this to turn violence. Because there is so much senseless violence already in this cavern, as you can clearly see. We brought all of you back from stone. You owe us, to be frank. Aye. That's why each of you is going to receive a thousand gold. We don't care for gold. We care for the safety and well-being of where we come from which is in jeopardy of people from here, from this northern lands, the Vikiri. For the me? The Vikiri? We, what the we bloody s- hell does that have to do with me? We need the alliance of Karvarak, and they sent us <laughs> to you. Well, if you go back to Dunigund Cargill, head of the Runesmith's Guild, and tell him you rescued his brother-in-law, you don't think that that'll achieve that? You do realize that everyone in that dwarven city thinks you are an Oathbreaker. Now, I why do would realize they think that? that a certain person on the throne may claim that I am. Dwarven politics are seldom understood by non-dwarven kin. I see. So you, there's a resistance to oust the the the, the Lord of the Hall, as it were. Probably not. All right. Well, we know um, we know the Iron Beards. They are good, fair folk. You disparage oh. one of them now. What the hell? Don't do that. <laughs> Stupid damn. Right as someone sent, right as you sent that message, um, the damn message. Yeah, it's your offline. Yeah, it just it just decided to upload. I saw it. Um, at, at, for the moment, right now, he is being very. I mean. He clearly, you know, he, he know. I mean, he can see you kind of standing there poised. He's not a dumbass by any means. So he's got one eye firmly trained on you as soon as you're closest to him. Um, so regarding an opening, 
Okay, it's I'm not make a really going to be toward... something that you're going to get like an easy opening. I mean, if you, uh, I'm yeah, I'm going to keep looking for that, but I'm going to try to, with my body language, sort of look like I'm at ease. I'm going to gesture towards Key and say, "Was what was uh, what was it that the cleric or that the the priest at the the chapel gave you to give to give to him?" Uh. <laughs> You remember was... he gave you, uh, he told you that we needed to give it to him. The scroll? No, it wasn't the scroll. Money? <laughs> says, now, I'll tell you what. We seem to be a bit of an impasse. He said, if you'll... I'll take a few steps back. And he's kind of like fire? specifically looking at Marlowe as he says that. I may be able to convince you without resorting to bloody so, in this fire axe of mine. I say, that sounds like a good idea, Marlo. Maybe you should take a few steps back. <laughs> I'm going to take one step back. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to... Uh, Close my eyes. Okay. Right, holding I'm going to take, take a couple st steps back. I so. kind of keep letting go of the axe in his left hand. He reaches back in to get the the message out. He okay. un he kind okay. of like unfolds some of it and then rips it. When I hear this, I'm going to assume he has something in his hand. And this I'm immediately one. going to dive at him to disarm him. Alrighty. Um, oh no. You're gonna have to make an initiative check then against him, um, which is in your favor. <laughs> um, you be okay. So you want to try to go for a disarm? All right. One second. Let me pull that up real quick. Make sure I get that right. You haven't done this for a while. Righty. Disarm. And why the hell not? I'll use inspiration. All right. One sec. Let me find it. Yay, finally. Woo woo. Is disarm a monk ability? Do you have anything like on that because of monk? No, I think I have a weapon that helps me with it, but... I think it's my nunchuck that's supposed to help. Okay, so it's just going to be... Alright, so it's a straight-up disarm? Yeah. Okie dokie, then. Right. Are you trying to disarm the thing he just pulled out, or like... His no, his axe. axe. Alright. <laughs> Right, so as a melee attack, you can attempt to disarm your opponent if you do so with a weapon which you don't have. You knock the opponent's weapon out of his hand and to the ground. If you attempt to disarm while unarmed, you end up with the weapon in your hand. So you're trying to snatch the weapon from him, effectively. Yeah. Um, so you make an attack of opportunity, but you provoke an attack of opportunity as well. All right. Um, How does inspiration factor in? Um, it, I'll tell you in a second. Um... And that's why I was checking to see if you had disarm or improved disarm because of your monkiness. No, I think I just have... Okay, so basically, yeah. you and the defender make opposing attack rolls. Um, <sighs> so that will be... Let's see one second. But you used, uh, you used inspiration, so that's good. Yep. <laughs> I want to make sure I get this part of it right for you as well.
Oh. What the what? We well, I have to saw. go to the boat, but I want to make sure that this is done properly. Um, and before Gore rolls a 20. <laughs> oh my god, please no. Well, um... <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. So, so his attack roll will be a oh, forty. Yikes! Jesus. Now, as you are using um, advantage, because uh, we're using the advantage effects, um, I know that we don't have, adva- you know, we don't have advantage disadvantage in three point five. But you are using um, your inspiration. So I will give you a plus five for the use of the inspiration on this. A plus five? Yep. Uh, I would also no. probably be in whichever style is going to help me the most. So that would probably be... Looks like Tiger style. Yeah, Tiger style will probably give you an advantage. Can you roll that high? <laughs> I could roll a twenty. Don't don't count me out. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So I just make a single attack, but add. So adding plus five six. plus. Yeah. Another one. Okay. Yeah. If the de- basically, if you beat the defender, he is disarmed, um, and you have the weapon. If you fail, the defender immediately gets to react and attempt to disarm you back if he wishes. Um, his attack would not provoke an attack of opportunity. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't so, think there was any way for me to win that. It's a roll of 20. Yeah, he, well, you know. <laughs> 5% chance. Okay, so you lunge at him. Right, seeing you do that, he kind of like sp- spins around, let like with like spins around at the last minute as you go to grab the axe. He kind of flinches it out and just puts his elbow kind of up and bars you off. Um, he isn't going to try to do a form of disarm back. He just kind of like takes a step backwards, drops the piece of paper on the floor grabs the axe with the second hand and kind of like crouches down with a very much more aggressive looking face and he Uh, says try that again and I'll cleave you in twain I'm going to glance at Kia see we go okay with that he puts his foot on the piece of paper and he flicks it towards Radovan he says pick it up I am going to do just that so this is this is part of the parchment. This is the that bottom we... part of the parchment. Okay. So I'm gonna pick it up and look at it. Alrighty. Because <laughs> um, I finally get to see what some of it fucking says. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Well, uh-huh. where uh-huh. clearly there was something above it. It says yours, doing gund cargill, and then below that um, are a bunch of dwarvish runes. You said so, you could eat runes. Read it. Oh no. <laughs> so I can't. Can I read those runes? Um, not like unless you can. Off- if you can, not unless you can read dwarvish. I can read dwarvish. Okay. Um. Give me a. Do you have spellcraft? Uh, spellcraft. Do you want me to do spellcraft? Yeah. All wrong. Give me a spellcraft check. Oh, please roll high. Oh, fuck my life. 13. Um, okay. I mean, you can read it, so it's not too hard. A 10 or, a, a ten or a higher would be fine. Um, you don't really understand specifically the incantation, but you've got a feeling it's probably something to do. There are definitely dwarvish words in there that refer to stone and flesh. Um... I mean, you can put two and two together from that, I guess, maybe. But he looks at you and he says, and you can see right there, it's signed by Doingund Cargill. I do. And I see some words in here having to do with the fact that you were petrified. And I, that, 
That was a spell to free me from the petrification. M magically cast into the paper. Like a magical scroll, so to speak. This, I understand. So, if I was unable to make you stone to flesh, this would. And we'd still be in this spot. This does not help what we have been told about you and what you claim. But why would they give you the ability to free me from a stone shape knowing I was stone? If they were wanting you to apprehend me, wouldn't they have wanted you to keep me in an immobile state? You, you do understand that... <clears throat> and don't take this the wrong way but you were quite heavy. It took both Marlow and myself to even move you in this position from where you had been stoned, petrified. Oh, look at me in this plate. I'm not exactly light as I stand now. It doesn't matter what it says. What matters is what we were told, which was to bring you back. Well, then I'm afraid if you're not going to listen to reason, there's only one way it's going to happen. Well, Can you Listen. Why would they? Can you give me a reasonable explanation as why as to why they would tell us to apprehend you if they didn't mean it? If you please explain. But quite honestly, it's going to put you in between a he said he said scenario. Well, I would like to listen to you. Well, it's not a he said he. Well, wait, Kia. It's not he said he said. It's he said they all said. A whole city said, and I, I'm just going to state well, for the record that we were given the runaround in that damn city and everyone seemed to chuckle and enjoy the fact that we were being sent on this And that doesn't mission. strike you funny? That oh, they were oh, laughing that you were being sent to capture the so-called Oathbreaker? I gotta be honest, I'd wish all of you would just die at this point, but... <laughs> so why wouldn't they just oh, you tell do. us the truth? So you wish Marlo. death upon all dwarven kind, Marlo. is that it? No, just the ones that are obviously not taking us seriously. And that would include the Runesmith. I didn't and meet you, the Runesmith. apparently. You, you seem to... <sighs> Perhaps we should come at it from another angle and you glean what we have done and what our accomplishments are and who we are. Maybe you'll gain some respect for us because we are actually quite above your station in where You're we above come... my station! <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> I don't care about station or rank or anything, except for the fact that the Marshal of the Mountain is the one that told us you were an Oathbreaker and that we needed to bring you back, preferably alive. Right. So and I'm telling you, I know, his... and that he is mistaken and has due cause to tarnish my good name. As I said, he said, I say. You can decide who you want to listen to. But you won't let us read the rest of the scroll. Because it doesn't interest me. It's no interest of yours. How do you know what private, the interest is? Because it's a private matter between me and my brother-in-law. I told you guys this was a mistake. We should have never taken this this request. You would rather have just delved, Marlo? At this point, we pretty much have delved. I'm is gonna say this completely serious, even though I don't know. We still don't know what the hell Delvig is. <laughs> is there a reason you don't want to come back with us to the city? Of course. And what, what is it? Well, I think you pretty much can figure that out for yourself. You're a wanted so criminal. You are an I have been dubbed an oathbreaker by the marshal. And you don't want to try to clear your name. That's exactly what I'm trying to do, but I can't do it by being taken back to the city and put in chains. Well, maybe we can help you. Well, that might have been an option at one point, but that would require trust. Something that we all seem to have done a grand job of destroying amongst each other. Oh, um, I can't do say anything about that. We were told one, one thing by somebody who was clearly in a high position back in the Dwarven City. So, of course, we were pretty much led to believe that you would lie to us and tell us whatever, but if you claim to be innocent or whatever it is he's accusing you of, I didn't like that asshole anyway, so if there's a way to clear your name, I, by all means, would help. Well, 
I'm gonna look to Radovan and Kia. Since we started on the wrong foot, <laughs> what Marlo says is true. I will just add this to the. I will just throw this into the pots, as it were. Right. My name is Radovan Rainier. I'm a cleric of St. Cuthbert's, who is all about law and order. If you were wrongfully convicted, I would not want to have to be to punish you because you're innocent. I want to get to the bottom of this as much as the next person, but I do not want it to come to violence. So, what is your plan right now if we were to just let you go? Because maybe we can help you and clear your name, but you also must, also must know that we could very well see that you are in fact guilty in trying to just put us, put wool, pull wool over our eyes as the phrasing goes. Well, I would get what I came here for. Take that, which it is. Gold? Oh, you've seen it. Oh, yes. Yes. It's a lot of it. I need that money. Okay. I'm hoping I'm it's gonna look a dying at child. <laughs> Well, BG Money's just kind not of moved a problem. into Radovan, and he's like, with that, he's like tugging on the bottom of Radovan's cloak. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> I, I, give him, I, I give him kind of like a semi dismissive brush, although I am kind of like nodding at the same time. I know, I know. Uh, he's trying Money's to pull me backwards to the wall. Uh, he's like, um. Uno momento, por favor. So Radovan. Uh, so Radovan. <laughs> I'm going to back up. What? Right, okay, so he pulls all the way over. Um, and then he kind of like puts his hand on your shoulder and like turns you th thusly so that your back is not, or so that your lips are not facing where the dwarf can see what you're saying. <laughs> and he, sa he looks at you, he says, um, look, suppose he's telling the truth. What is this one lone dwarf going to do for our cause? I mean, Quite honestly, I, the other person, even if they do have a disagreement with this particular individual, are the relevant parties that we need to do. So upsetting them and wronging them is probably not a smart move. Um, we may all feel great about helping a lone dwarf clear his name, but clearly we're going to make enemies of the wrong people if we do it. But while Beecham's over here doing this, I'm going to step up to the dwarf, and uh, okay. I'm going to well, offer him my hand. He raises his axe in a threatening fashion. I'm just going to kind of chuckle, and I'm going to offer my hand and say, I don't want an innocent man to be doomed because of me. If there's a way to clear your name, I wish to help you. And honestly, I don't think the marshal should be in power if he's willing to send somebody to death for some petty grudge. He says, well, where dwarves are concerned, grudges are never petty. He says, and if you want to help me clear my name, the best thing you can do is let me leave with the gold and get on with it. It's not really anything you can help me with. Hmm. Other than allow me to leave here without too many bumps and bruises and scrapes to where I have to rest a day or two to recover And explained what you want to do with the gold, Brandon. I need to pay somebody. So, uh, as that is happening with what Beecham said to uh -huh. me, I'm going to say, all I need is 10 seconds, 10 minutes, not 10 seconds, of time so I can subdue this son of a bitch. Because I do actually agree with you. This is but we need to bring him into a false sense of security and safety. Fair enough. What? Sorry, uh, that's metagaming. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, if that's what you think, of course, I totally trust your judgment. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't letting our, um, you know, our, the kindness in, of our, in our hearts get a, ahead of our duty to save the crown, as it were. Fair enough. It's... We just have to worry about him and then Marlo, of course, because I don't think she'd understand. 
Uh, with that, he kind of like steps out and says, Well, um, it was an awful lot of gold. It's a shame that we're not going to be able to keep it. I still think we could be of help. There's an awful lot of people that think you're an oathbreaker. Yes. And I don't I know understand. that you're not, but I have no reason to believe you are one until proven. When someone of such a high station accuses you of such a thing, and you don't have any hardened proof at the time, their word does tend to stand solid. How about, how about this? We don't take you back to the city per se. We take you close enough and get your brother or cousin or whatever his name is to visit his us brother outside the brother-in-law to visit us outside the wall. We take the gold yourself and all of us and we all go together and we get you close but not in but and then we get to the bottom. Ex- entirely the wrong direction for me. Besides, I can't go that close and risk apprehension. Well, and I don't really have no eight. desire to butcher a dozen or more of fine dwarvish men that are doing little more than a be in the orders of a misguided marshal. If we can get proof that he didn't do whatever it is they think he did, that would be better. Well, how about this? You help me carry the gold outside. Ah. Take what I need, you take the rest. I'll still sign your note, telling Coracle that you freed me from my stony prison, so that you can, if I'm telling the truth, you'll get rewarded. And then I'll head off and take care of what I need to take care of. Should take no more than about five days. I'll return and then we can all go back to the city together. With me with the information and ability to free my name, and you will have succeeded in the task that was assigned to you. Everybody wins, and nobody so, gets burnt to death. You you want us to let you leave with the gold, and we wait here for you for five days? They wait here, right or you can wait at the city, it doesn't matter to me. Mm-hmm. Come Once you. I've succeeded in what I need to do, I'll head to the city anyway. Are dwarves typically the honorable type, Redman? Well, I will just say that the iron beards that we have dealt with in the past have been honorable. They saved our lives up in the, in the Tricrown Mountains against the evil cults. Right. As Marla, so as, you know, he's the dwarf's face in you, you can see Beecham, like, doing this, he's like, I don't know. He's a selfish boy. I'm not gonna listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna turn back God. to the dwarf. Yeah, he's like insane. mouthing like oathbreaker. He's an oathbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ignore what Beecham's doing, and I'm gonna turn back to him and say, "Can you swear on your honor?" Such as such as what I have left, eh? Your own personal honor, not what other people give you. Absolutely. I think we should let him go. But no, if you don't come back, I won't stop till I hunt you down. I understand that. And I wouldn't have blame you. Alright, I'd like to... We can give him five <laughs> days. <laughs> man. Shit. <laughs> um... Well, while you ponder that, it's a perfect time for us to take a break. Okay, thank you. I need the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see all your brains are like going. Alright. <laughs> well, I would like to do something. Do we have a deal? <clears throat> I'm going to cast a spell. Who are you? Um. <laughs> Using my still spell feet, so I don't use my hands. <laughs> so I don't have to move any part of my body, so I don't freak him out. 
<laughs> and uh, I'll whisper as quietly as I can. <laughs> Hang on then. Okay. So I'll, I'll just I'll just be you know floating up in the air, just <laughs> still, and I'll and I'll try to cast a spell on him. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna float up in the air, and um, only you. Okay, and what are you trying to do? And I'll be casting Feeble Mind since I'm using Still Spell. It's one spell slot higher, so okay. it'll, it'll be used as a level oh, six spell. Let me just break something. Alrighty. But basically. And what will the DC for that be then? For level six, it will be twenty. Twenty. Alrighty. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Norman agrees. Uh, That would Stop. basically if you succeed. <laughs> that drops his charisma and intelligence by one, right? Two one. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Two, Here comes one. a baby. Sorry, that's, that's what I meant. Two one. Um, yeah. All righty. Um, spell is. <laughs> so, and it is a willpower save. Oh, oh God, that's not good. Dude has willpower for days. <laughs> seven, so uh, he has. Uh, he only has a plus seven. Still a plus seven more than we want him to have. So he has to get a twenty. Oh, don't say that. No, he doesn't. Not if it's if the difficulty's twenty. He needs to roll thirteen or higher. Well, I mean. No, I know. I know. Combined. <laughs> oh yeah, a, com a total of. Th I thought you meant he has to roll a twenty. Oh. Alrighty, let's see. Um. This could be kind of mission critical. <laughs> yeah, will he feel it? Will he feel it? Um, and what is the feat you're using? Um, it's still spell, so he just won't see me casting it. What? Um, is it only... Uh, it's, so it's verbal somatic? I was trying to figure that out. What like did it say? It uh, I, can, I can look it up if you need me to. Like, I have the spell pulled up and... Uh, I couldn't find anywhere where it said it was like somatic or. Uh, what what which spell are you casting? Through. You said feeble mind. Feeble mind. Yeah, yeah. it's an enchantment. Yeah. Um, mind um, affecting. So feeble mind. It's VSM. Yeah, verbal somatic material. So, so I was gonna try to just whisper it as softly as I could. Uh, well, but... it also requires you to use some physical, uh, um, basically, um, a handful of clay, crystal glass, or mineral sphere. Yeah. So, so you have to use mineral. So basically, what you're doing... Still. She doesn't you, have a focus? Well, she that does, but you, you still have to use it. You have to use a physical oh. object to cast it. So what Well, he has his back to her. Sorry? He has his back to her. Yeah, So I if know. she quietly does it, he may yeah. not notice. Well, that's what I'm trying to look... But what I was saying is, what you're talking about doing, Kia... Yeah. And with that, you're talking about with the feet... Um... That will allow you to not have to. I believe if it's the, which fit are you using? Still spell. Okay. Um, so Can yeah, still spell, spell basically means you don't have to. Um, like use your hands or anything like that. Right. Or you can do it without anything. So you could basically just hold your hold your thing in your hand and just. Just mumble the words under Just your mumble throat. the words. All right, yeah. okay. that's my attempts yeah. anyway to try um, to. So do I would say that as long as you are deliberately mumbling it, um, you will feel it if it fails. <laughs> uh, no, he won't. Feel okay, it. okay, okay. That's good. Um, so let's see. Or at least if he does, he won't know that you did it. He may okay. feel weird, but he won't necessarily know where it came from. All right. Uh, so he needs a 13 or higher. Oh, fuck my life. Oh, and I just accidentally <laughs> closed out the damn stream. I need inspiration! <laughs> One second. Damn you, chat, for Guys, not giving Jane chat, inspiration. Guys, chat, give us more inspiration. <laughs> I think they forget we we can do it sometimes. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, you got to remember, they, it's, yeah, we're playing 3.5, but because we liked the, we liked the, that was the one, you know, the mechanic, we drug it over. So they're used to, um, you know... They're yeah. used to doing that. Uh, one second. And let me just go ahead and open that back up. Sorry about that. I closed it off. Alrighty. Hold on. Okay. 
tag stream back open. All right. So with that, okay. So be plus two. So that's going to be plus. So it's actually a total of plus nine. So it's d twenty plus nine, is what he's at. Shoot. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So eleven. Oh, eleven. Yep. Okay. Well, dwarves. Fifty-five percent um, chance. Fifty-five percent chance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dwarves all have like a plus two racial saving thrown us against spell and spell effects. So. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm afraid he pissed it. Didn't even yeah. know it. it he, he's so strong-willed, <laughs> it doesn't even enter it into... It doesn't even break through his cranium. You're like... Mumbling under your breath, and he doesn't even seem to bat an eyelid. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried. I'm, I'm okay with letting you go for five days, but I'm not sure that... I'm not sure that... Uh, I'm going to glance over at Beecham and Radvan. Right. He kind of like the, turns. That's a compromise they're willing to make unless there's further compromise, if that makes so, sense. Well, it seems to be something that we all have to agree upon. After all, if two of your friends decide not to allow it and I am unfortunate enough to have to cross weapons with them, I'm sure you'll help your friends. Is there any way we could come with you on this five day journey? The truth is, I didn't trust you to come with me. I believe that the first time I was to try to take rest, one of you had ambushed me in my sleep. Well, we feel the same about you. Right, so it wouldn't make any sense for us to travel together. Not at this time, anyway. All I can do is give you my word. One well, of two things that happen. I'll either be successful and back within five days or I'll be dead and it won't really matter much anyway. Ratterman, don't you have a way to... Sort of, like what you were going to use on... The spell that you were going to use back in Rockhelm. Yeah. Or Rockport, wherever it was, I can't remember now. <laughs> that not only requires touch, but also trust. And he would have to willingly let me do it. Which, by the way he's been talking and the way this conversation's been going, I don't think he'd take too kindly to it. Well, a way of monitoring his progress and his trustworthiness. If if Radovan were to do that, is there something that we could do in exchange? Not really. I don't wish any of you any harm or a need to track you or know anything about you. What are you I guys mean, talking about? Look at it this way. I'm going to take as much gold as I can carry, which, from what I reckon, not that I've had chance to lay eyes upon it, but that'll probably leave you a fair whopping great amount of gold that you can do with as you want. And then and, if and you return to my brother-in-law, he'll give you another thousand apiece. So, just the amount of wealth that I'm willing to depart upon you should seem like a fair bargain to me. It's not really about the gold. Do you, do you care for, for the city at all? The well-being of your kin? Of course I do. So, this is full truth. There is a northern group called the Vicari. Perhaps you've heard of them. Uh -huh. They're seafaring folk. They're, they worship uh, thunder gods, basically. They have been encroaching the south and are seeking to surround this entire mountainside. And we are on a mission from Karvarek because we need their, uh, your friend's alliance, although you don't think they're your friends, to basically stop this invasion of the, south, the lowlands and the highlands that are to the south and west of this mountainside. Your, your, your city is about to be surrounded by these people that are not going to be friendly to you. Uh, that is our mission. So you running off without us, taking this gold, which I don't even think is in the is in the corner anymore. We didn't see it in the corner. I don't know where it is. I'm gonna turn and look at right of him. I know when it's supposed to be that. in here somewhere. That's what I come here for. Fair enough. But you take that and run off, and we don't know if you're you're gonna come back. You, everyone says you're an oathbreaker, so we can't trust your word. You're basically dooming your city. Not quite. Not a good dwarf, if you ask me. Because there are a lot of good people in that place. I, the that the innkeeper with the colorful beard. I really liked him. 
Even though I did purify one of his drinks, but you know, that's beside the point. <sighs> no, no, what you're saying <laughs> makes some sense. Uh, clearly, you're trying to win favor of the Marshal and the Lord of the Hall, and they've given you this task in order to do so. Right. So, of course, it's in your best interest to apprehend me, which I understand. On the other hand, if I go back to the city, I'll be locked in change and thrown in the dungeon, possibly or probably executed for something I didn't do. That's not going to help my people. But if I can clear my name, and then I'm freely to walk around the city as one of their heroes once more, ha, well then, then I'm in a situation to help a lot of people. I'm not okay with taking him if he's not guilty, Radovan. Honestly, I wouldn't be either, but he needs to let us in for us to get anywhere here, because as he rightly said, we are at an impasse. I have shared more with you than I have anyone outside of this party that I've been traveling with for several years, doing many things, among them fighting in a war. This lady right here took down a dragon. Said, so, hey, it's been a long time since I've slain a dragon myself. <laughs> Can I do a, sen a sense motive on that? Wow. <laughs> that you want to? That's funny. Because <laughs> he said it so like, no, I did it. Yes, I did it. <laughs> there you go. Um, he, he sounded pretty sincere. I mean, he didn't he looked. I mean, he, he was looking straight at Marlow when he said it, and looking, you know, and glanced back at you. I mean, it's okay. It's hard hmm. to sense motive on just simple things like that. You need more actions and all that other stuff to go with it. Right. I, I was just yeah. trying to like the overall demeanor. I mean, uh, he said it kind of wistfully, you know. So it's like, is that yeah. genuine wistfulness? I honestly hope that he's not an oathbreaker, right? Man, I'd rather him win than the marshal. I. That guy was an too. ass. I agree. But he's not letting us help him I'm clear his name. I'm absolutely letting you help me. All you gotta do is get out the damn way and let me leave. Do I'm not stopping you doing that at all. Getting an audience with Lord Ironbeard. Or, yep, that's his name. <laughs> Bronzebeard. <laughs> Sorry. Bronzebeard. <laughs> well, Radovan, to get trust, you have to give trust. Yes, Marlo. You, you are willing to let a person that a whole city is claiming is a, is a, a thief, or well, not a thief, an oathbreaker. Well, let's let's, out let's with address that. Twenty thousand gold pieces that could we we talked about using to to bribe the Highlanders to allying with the Lowlanders. But they wouldn't tell us anything, any further details, Radovan. Maybe the marshal is lying about it, and if somebody in power suggests something, why would anybody else have? Yeah. Why would they question it? We can question it because we're outsiders. I, you don't understand. I can't question it. They it's are the authority. It's not your law. It's their law. Which I have agreed to. The whole idea of my faith is to go along with the laws as they seem well, just. And, and the fair. laws say that it's okay to put an uh, innocent man. The law says it's okay to carry through with dictations like this. Unless evidence is to the contrary, that I would, of course, then, then fight for. And he's wanting to go no. get the evidence. It's a he said, she said. Yes. So either we go with him to get the evidence together, or he goes with back with us to the car rock. That's the only thing I'm willing to do. I'm not going to let him leave here with twenty thousand gold pieces and his word that he's going to come back and clear his name. Twenty thousand. Well, that's what Beecham said, isn't Did it? Did I try to cast Feeble Mind again? I while thought you <laughs> said there wasn't any gold in the corner, Radovan. Well, kind of listening to you, he says, Look, <laughs> in the interest of being honest, oh. as it seems that honesty is the only thing that's going to possibly get us anywhere, the Lord of the Hall, Burgund Ironbeard, is a, an honorable man. He does not know that I did not do what I've been accused of doing. He believes, because he was advised by his marshal and some of his marshal's men, that I did what they accused me of doing. So I have no quarrel with him. And indeed, the marshal himself 
based on the information he had at hand. What the what? A DB, 29 months of love from you, my friend. Spam your pants off and throw in your hype. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks, Duncan. He says, with the information he had at hand, I understand why he believes I did what I'm accused of. The problem I have is he wouldn't have given me the opportunity to go get the evidence. Now I ask you, if you're in my shoes, knowing that the evidence is right out there that can clear your name, but the only way to get it is to flee from the authorities and get it against their request and come back with it, would you not do the same? Radovan probably wouldn't. I'm just going to go deep in thought as I consider this. <laughs> not going to answer right away. So All I'm asking you, give me five days. I'll either, as I said, I'll either be dead or I'll be back with ironclad proof. And at that point, even the marshal will be happy with the information. And I'm sure he'll be glad that he was wrong. The only reason, as you claim, the whole city thinks I'm an oathbreaker is because the marshal says I am. And he's an honorable man too. Just <laughs> not really giving me the opportunity to defend myself. And that's not right, right, man? Isn't there some law that says somebody has the right to defend themselves? Not if they're guilty of a crime and deserve the punishment that's afforded to them. But we don't know that he's guilty. Martha, that's exactly the point and the problem. Because we don't know well, that he's innocent either. Look, yeah, but he says there's proof that can prove he's innocent. He should be able right. to defend himself. And I've been saying all along that only if we go along with him on his little journey will I will we this impasse ends. So let's assume he then. He doesn't trust us. I agree with that. Okay, continue there. And we all go away on a, on this journey together. You're all gonna trust me while you sleep. We always keep a watch. I can tell you now, and again in the interest of honesty, Ain't one of you that I couldn't kill in a matter of seconds and probably behead another two or three before the rest woke up. So if you're going to come with me... Keep a distance from each other. (laughs) You're going to have to stay very vigilant. Or you're going to have to trust me. Honestly, if we were to do this arrangement, seeing as how you are apparently such a badass who can take all of us out... I already said I don't believe I could take all of you. My you claim say, was that at least a couple, couple of, of you would probably die in the attempt. I'm not delusional. I think that's a fair compromise. If you let me cast a spell on you. Like hell. What spell? Didn't care. Don't trust magic. Never have, never will. Not the kind that comes from fingers anyway. I'd only have your word for what you claimed it was. And as we've already established, there's a certain element of mistrust going on. Actually, it would be a protective spell. Believe for me, I us. don't need a whole lot of protection. Oh, it wouldn't be protection for you. It would be protection for us, so you wouldn't kill us in the middle of the night. It would well, be like uh, insurance, aimed, if you were. As long as it's nothing aimed or affecting me, and you don't mind me getting out of eyesight while you cast it. I have no... No quarrel with you. Do what you hell you want to to each other. So it's settled. We'll come with you. I take no responsibility for your survival if you do. We can take care of ourselves. And Marlos, I say this uh, believing that he's not going to be a threat to me. I'm thinking of threats that are outside the party. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's go get the gold then. <laughs> right. Well, with that, he says, "Well, 
Apparently you know where it is, so you lead the way. All right, and he just kind of like stands against the wall with his axe and kind of like motions for everybody to head in the d whatever direction you want to go in. All right. Well, if the guy's not here. in the corner, where is it? I'm not really paying attention to him motioning. I'm just watching him. This is well, I don't know where the gold is. I, I flew away, so I thought you were there. has gone wandering off <laughs> in the direction you went. He seems eager to go wherever you're going. <laughs> he wants gold. <laughs> you like to say this is why it's not going to work. I, I start. You didn't to want walk me off behind you, and I will not have you behind me. I we start can't to even walk move. Off within. <laughs> when I notice that uh, Radovan's not moving, I kind of, like, hang back, too, because I'm really afraid Radovan's going to do something to this guy. I'm actually going to curse them under my breath and start... I'm just going to go to these guys, and I'm going to just search through their pockets. Right, get their um, story, if I okay, can. Okay, if you're doing that, he sidesteps down the wall to about here, poised, <sighs> and watches you do it. Yeah, so I'm going to root through the, the clerics and the just okay. to get information um, about... All right, you root through the clerics' possessions. Um, you find a um, you find a morning star, which he had on his belt, yet he never once pulled it out and wielded it. Uh, he was wearing no form of armor whatsoever. It's just, just like a robes. Um, he has a holy symbol, um, which is a symbol to a friendly god, one that you would definitely like. Um, uh oh. Well, <laughs> shit. Oops. Yeah, what just... is the symbol? <laughs> Probably like Heronius or some shit. Yeah, Heronius. Right. <laughs> yeah, Heronius. That was it. <laughs> oh, it was. It was Heronius. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> was it? Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, his symbol is for um Erythnel. Sounds like a if drug. If you want to make a. Yes, I do. <laughs> you know what a it is, that's all. fine if you don't. Uh, yes, yeah, a religion check, right? Yeah. Good old Arethanol. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's basically the god of slaughtering people. Okay. Which might uh, possibly point at how why they were so happy to fight and blood and bleed amongst oh. all you guys. Um, so I'm gonna po I'm gonna pocket it. I'm taking okay. it, like I did the Odin symbol. All right, yeah. he has a money purse that has 20 platinum and 15 gold. Oh my god, he's rich. But he needed that gold. So 20 platinum and... Sorry, say again, Corey. Uh 20 platinum and uh, 15 gold. Okay. All right. Um, he also has a kind of a, a really tarnished looking brass ring on his left hand, on his index finger. So with this dwarf looking over me, I'm going to do a detect magic on it. Um, to see if it is magical. Okay, yes, it pisses magic. It is definitely potent magic. It's a potent magical item. So hey, Beecham's I'm gonna, got one of those. I'm going to pocket it. <laughs> Beecham keeps his in his pants. It pisses okay. magic. So you take I'm it. gonna pocket it. I'm not. I'm not going to wield it because I don't know what it does. But right, well, make sure a... you put it in your inventory and put down at this point. Then, um, brass ring okay. from cleric of Ethnol. E R E R Y T H N U L. E R Y T H N A L. E R Y T H N U L. Yep. Okay. Um, so that should you identify it later, I remember where you got it from. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I don't forget what it is. Um, alrighty. So you came in here after the gold all by yourself, knowing the threat that was here? I didn't know the threat was in here. I assumed that there was something unpleasant, but quite honestly, I wasn't quite prepared for what it was. I'm going to go to the wizard next. Okay. Kind of frowning. Alrighty. Um, the wizard, you search him. 
Okay, he has a small bag of gems. Oh. Okay. Which you'd have to obviously go through and appraise if you want to know what they're worth. Okay. Um, he has 67 gold and 8 silver. He has a very heavy, thick, leather-bound tome in his, um, kind of like in a, a shoulder satchel. The spell book. Yep. Um. Um, obviously he has a rod that has like a silver ball on the top of it with like a silver band right at the very top. So it's like a wooden, like a wooden cane with a silver ball on it and about an inch below that there's like an inlaid silver band on it. So my, my detect magic would have lasted through this. Yeah, search, and so that would... is magical as well. So it is a, it is a magical cane, basically, um, right? It's a magical staff. Magical cane staff, okay. Yep. So I'm going to take that as well. All right. Um, he also has a dagger tucked inside his robe, which is also magical. <laughs> All right. These guys are literally pissing magic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, and make sure you mark that you got those from wizards. The wizard in here. <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. Um, and just to speed things up, if you loot the others, I mean, you know that they all have. Nearly, you know, uh, the others, three of them have shields, five, all five yeah. of them have long swords. You get a total of, um, let's see, right, there's a total of exactly, each one of them has a an individual purse with 100 gold in it, plus a secondary purse that has just a few gold in each one. So say a combined 20 gold in the offhand purses, but then exactly five purses with 100 in each. So six hundred, like seven hundred gold total, right? I mean, no, five hundred plus five hundred, five hundred gold because there's five of them no. plus um, twenty. Yeah, so five hundred and twenty gold. We'll just even that out to seven hundred. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to take my time with this. I just <laughs> yeah. so, so, but the point just, being that every one of them has a purse of exactly a hundred gold, like an identical that's, purse. That's strange. Okay. I'm gonna take it and. Sounds kinda... like they were paid. <laughs> I'm just. I'm not even looking at the dwarf. I'm just gonna pass by and walk okay. up to where he is. Well, once you start doing that, he falls in behind you and follows you at least as far up as Marlow. And then he like politely looks at her and goes, "Ladies first. <laughs> I don't know where we're going. I'm just walking. Guess we're following Beecham and Kia up here. I probably would have told um, Beecham while they're all down there to grab a few more gold pieces. Okay. This bastard gets some. All so, right. So, so Beecham before they get there, Beecham rifles through it then, um, and uh, oh, don't do that. Um, rifles through it and grabs a few extra gold and then, <laughs> like, stands off to the side. All right, yeah, so basically you've got about 5,000 gold individually in each chest, and then the gold bars, which Beecham guesstimated to be probably worth about as much as the gold, to, you know, together. Uh, Kia, mind, just a second. Sure. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk up here while they do whatever they're doing. Okay. I'm going to take a step to the side so I'm not standing behind the dwarf because I know that makes him uncomfortable. <laughs> All right. Well, he, he looks, kind of looks at Marlowe and looks at Beecham, walks over and crouches down and picks up the smaller chest that has the bars in and, like, puts it up under his arm, holding the axe in the other. He says, This would be enough for me. All the gold in the other two chests, by all means, do with as you will. I'm going to look to Beecham. Um, he is already Shrug at this chest, flipped the lid open, and is stuffing his pockets with gold. Including his saddlebag. You see Beecham, like, take out, throw a, discard a couple of apples and a chicken leg, and then continue to <laughs> stuff it full of gold. <laughs> to the point where Beecham is, like, having to adjust it over his shoulder because it's hanging so low. I'm going to have, like, a kind of a disturbed brow furrow going on watching... Beecham do this, and I'm just going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> Right. 
Be Beach yeah, Beecham has got a very ple a very pleased look on his face. He's got his eyes are wide open and he's like oh. <laughs> I'm gonna take a step back. I don't want anything to do with this cold nonsense. All right. Well once he's got as much as he thinks he can carry, he, he kind of just looks at looks over at you and he's like I can't carry all this by myself. You'll, you'll all have to pitch in. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Um, so what are Radovan and Kia? Uh, so I, I basically up in the corner. I take her aside and I present to her the wizard spellbook, and I'm going to say, I don't think you might find any value in here, but this was the writings of another spellcaster that's more in line with you than me. Maybe he had information about who he was, who he represented, where he came from. Could be of use. I don't really like reading Renovin. Kia, just do it for me, please. And in reward, <laughs> here's a magical staff thing that he had. Have it another is magical. magical staff, because you need a third one. <laughs> I don't really <laughs> need it. We don't know what it could come in use to us if we find out what it can do. So it's... Okay. Look at and, mine. I know. It's beautiful. Thanks. And here is a magical dagger for you to have and maybe glean what it does. Because it's for Risa, not me. No, it's just I don't want to carry all this crap around. I don't, can you up your volume on is there any can you increase the gain on your mic any, any at all? It could be cursed and I don't want to carry it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. That's better. Yeah. So what did you say? Fine, I'll carry the dagger. I'll carry the staff. Well, just just I'll carry the book. Will you go carry all that gold down there? I, I don't want to just let this guy leave. And if we follow him, it'll be a pain in the ass. We need to subdue him. go on this journey just looking at him with uh, with knowing eyes we know each other pretty well. <laughs> just go do this thing Wait. the knowing eyes is that different from the seductive Wait. eyes or Wait. what's the deal <laughs> the winky eyes it's her special eyes. Wink and turn away it's like, he's 30 feet yeah. away i'm not gonna talk about this my brand yeah, so jane give me a knowing eye please i want to see what it looks like role play it <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, For knowing, just, I kind of yeah. looks like when I was in trouble when I was like five. Right. <laughs> it's how Brianna of Tarth looks at um, the big ginger bearded fellow. <laughs> you know what you did. That's the look that you get right before they use your middle name. Right. So I'm just gonna sigh and and kind of just go Kia along. Kia Mavis with that. Liana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we good to go. Okay, so yeah, he's got the smaller chest under one arm. Beecham clearly is weighed down as much as he can carry, um, leaving you about one and a half chests full of gold to acquire. We're we just gonna leave the rest here, or what? And I'm gonna look at Beecham. Um, he's like, um, I've got my share. Um, yeah. To keep putting the way I see it, there's four of us, about 10,000. That's uh, 2,500 apiece. I've got approximately that. Um, once we get back to the Dwarven City, I'll have it transformed into something more manageable. All right, so I'm going to take my 2,500. All right. right, so 2,500 gold, just so you know, I mean, you are all very heavily weighed down. That is an awful lot of gold to carry. You won't blow away in the wind. All we are is gold in the wind. I'll take a hundred gold, but I'm not taking that much with me. I don't, I don't even okay, want to take a hundred yeah. of it. But okay. I mean, you guys carrying two, two, carrying two thousand five hundred gold, you're all heavily encumbered. So your movement is going to be significantly diminished. And you know, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. But I'm not that, okay with that. So, like I said, a hundred. So you're just taking a hundred. Okay. So are you guys <laughs> leaving the other twenty four hundred here? If, if she's not taking it, I'm not taking it. I mean, I'm already as is, so... Yeah, you guys can have... Anybody can have the rest of 
what was my share, but I'm... Alright. Um, the dwarf's like, well, unless you want to stick around here in this filthy hole for any length of time, let's get our asses out of here. Okay. Very warily, I'm going to follow. <laughs> Alright. Let's go, Randy. Um, so how are you <laughs> carrying your gold? Obviously the dwarf's got his in his chest. Beecham has his all slung over in his bag. Plus his pockets are stuffed full. So you're going to stuff your backpacks full? Mm-hmm. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, alright. Okay. And then, are you all just going to leave the cave? Anybody doing anything on the way out? Nope. Make sure Cal comes with me. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. That's all. Um, well, if that's the case, let's put you um, back outside the frozen waterfall, then. And let me move this back to. Oh, he's not there anymore, is he? You got rid of him. How'd you make it past the ice siren, or whatever the hell she was? Okay, with that, he kind of, like, walks over here to where this axe is in the ground. And, like, reaches down and kind of, like, polishes some of the ice and goes... and beckons you over. I'm gonna run over to look, because I want to know. Okay, um... (laughs) In, like directly beneath that you see what appears to be a frozen dwarf with like one hand reached up probably <laughs> two inches from the axe and frozen in place he says a good man fell right there and another a little further down and then he kind of goes over and points remember the one that you saw before the one that I tried to punch out of the ice yeah, yeah. He says, Unfortunately, there were three of us that came. Only I made it in sight. And were you all Oathbreakers on the run trying to clear your name? I'm going to still look nope. at Nope. They were just good friends that knew darn well that what I'd been accused of was not true. You know, if we wait here, I can speak to them. Maybe get some answers from them about your innocence that would make us trust each other more. How the dead? I have ways of speaking with the dead. Although I would need to rest. But it would be a way to clear your name. I kind of have kin of mine bothered in the eternal rest. Pestered well, just to ask questions. No, no, that would be most unfitting of those that died so honorably you would think though that being your friend they wouldn't bo- they wouldn't mind being bothered for this for your sake i but i'd mind knowing that Fair they enough. were pestered on my behalf of course if you feel like you want to stay here and do that i can't stop you but you won't of course wait well, of course not i've got somewhere to be <sighs> so what as we're walking, I'm just going to call like to him. What year was it when you entered this cave? What year? Yeah, you you remember us before the fight broke out. We were talking about what year it was. Well, the year is... Uh, the... What year the, is it to you? The year when I came in the cave. 18, yeah. It goes 1867. By the Dwarven calendar. That would be... 908. Mm. You haven't been in here very long, have you? They knew he was here. Well, the others had been petrified for over ten, a dozen years. Ah, well, I saw plenty of the statues when I came in. I. They unfortunately had met their fate long before I came in. <clears throat> but, okay. 
the marshal, the runesmith, whoever, they knew he was in here. How come they hadn't already sent someone for him? They acted like he would be difficult to bring in, but if he was just a statue, surely the dwarves could have come up with some way to transport a statue. Well, the challenge was clearly there was the ice siren thing, there was the serpent creatures, there was the basilisks. Are you telling me that the dwarves aren't bad enough to take on all of that? Trolls. I never said that. I'm just saying they might have had cause or reasons not to venture out. And if they honestly thought he was an oath breaker, then why not just leave him there? Uh, that's not the way of dwarves. You have to face justice if you break an oath. But, um, no, I probably that there are a bunch of outsiders willing to do the dirty work for them, so. And knowing how um, difficult I could be to apprehend, perhaps they figured that being outsider is you may be a little bit more um, disposable. Hmm. Figures. I cannot blame. I have a question them. for you, Radavan. What, Marlow? If we were in a similar situation where I was thought to be a quote-unquote oath breaker and you didn't know if I was guilty or not would you have been like these other dwarves and I'm going to point to the ones in the ice and come with me to try to clear my name I would with your permission hopefully you'd grant it being the trust and friendship we've had for so many years I would hope that you'd let me cast spells to glean and learn the truth and if you were in fact innocent I would then of course assist you there were... are many ways to discern from lying and lies I would rather not cast it on someone with them not wanting. Because in Arconis, where I'm, where we, where Kia, where, where I'm from, Kia's from the Elven Kingdom, uh, it's illegal to just cast spells on someone randomly. Unless they are willing and they accept it. Well, his friends weren't able to cast spells like that, Radovan. They just believed him. Right. But. You don't understand. If I fail in my duty and my tasks, I will be stripped of my powers. It is something that is core to my being. I have been through that once before with Raysa. And lo and behold, I had to atone. And that was not fun. There was no picnic. I wasn't asking about Raysa. But it's in the same vein. I'm not going to just trust this man, this dwarf, blindly. We weren't talking about I, him either. We are talking about your hypothetical, yes. And I answered your hypothetical. I would hope that you would let me cast a spell on you to glean whether you were telling me the truth or not. But you wouldn't trust me or believe me to tell you the truth I would magic. trust you to... I need to know for certain whether I'm doing the right thing or not. This is a gift from Cuthbert. It's what I know to do. And so the I answer need. is no, you wouldn't trust me without magic. Understood. Can we continue? I thought we were. We were walking as this was happening, right? Um, okay, well, the dwarf is, he kind of, if you're going to just follow him, he goes down around the edge of this bluff and follows the path northwards, which is taking you further and further into the depths of the mountain. <clears throat> All right. Well, by the time, with the time and everything, Bennett, that you've been down inside there, and the time you got here, it's pretty It's pretty dark once you get outside. Once you kind of get up to the top of this bluff, as it were, and you've got kind of a vantage point over the area below, the dwarf just drops his gold chest on the ground and says, Oh, I'm stopping here for the night. He said, I'm not stopping here for the night? He, says he, he said, is. I'm stopping. I'm All stopping. Right. Yeah. Um... How far away should we be from each other? Says, That's up to you. And you see, he basically he takes his small chest of gold bars, lays it down, and then plants himself down and kind of like leans on it with his upper back and shoulders and his head and just puts his head on it like a pillow. Alright. I'm going to sit down beside the dwarf. Alright. I'm going to look to Radovan for um, guidance. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very confused. 
I'm honestly looking at Marlo, not out of concern or worry, but just out of like, he's just frowning because he knows what he said and he knows how that possibly affected her. I'm going to turn to the dwarf and I'm going to say, I trust you. He says, well, I appreciate that. While he uh, says that, though, I'm going to sense motive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> While he's answering me. Alright, um... He does probably seem genuinely appreciative of the fact that you're trusting him. Okay. As best you can tell. <laughs> Alright, I'll go about um, 20 feet from them, just... Looking really concerned and beckoning Radovan over. I'll I'll follow. Where where are you going actually? Oh, where, where's the guy? I gotta be twenty feet from the guy. Marlo should be next to him. There. Okay, so Marlo's gonna kip down next to him. I'm going to look at Beecham and just kind of like kind of gesture to keep an eye on the guy. All right, he just kind of like gives you a nod. Okay. So, so to Kia, I'm going to say I... Marlo is pissed at me right now. I heard the conversation. Yeah. There's more I wanted to say, of course, but I don't think it would be understood at this point. I don't think she quite gets your dedication to your god yet. Or what it entails. It's not that I don't trust her. It's that I I would be... I'd want to trust her, but I would have to know for certain before I continued on. I didn't say that clearly enough. And I'm just gonna... I'm, I'm gonna lay down and sit... Lay down and kind of just like... Wrap myself in my furs and kind of like curse to myself as I rest. <laughs> Alright. Um, so up. who... Who, if anybody, is going to keep keep an eye out or keep a watch? All right, I'll be keeping a watch for the um, first four Beecham hours. Beecham apparently is doing so. He's actually staying up. Oh, he's staying up? Then I'll have Rad him wake Radavan me up. basically went like this to keep an eye on him, so Beecham is doing okay. what Radavan told him, and he's going to watch the dwarf. I'll have him wake me up in four hours. Have Beecham wake you up in four hours? Yeah. Okay. So Beecham's gonna. So Kia and Radavan are gonna sleep first. Beecham's gonna watch. Um, Marlo, you wanna? You gonna? You gonna rest or are you staying up? I'm gonna rest. All right. Everybody else is paranoid enough for me. All righty. <laughs> um, right. So Marlo, remember as you kind of like uneasily get yourself ready to rest. Before you even start, you remember that for the past couple of weeks, every time you close your eyes and begin to doze off. These weird, glowing, like, blue eyes and this, like, flash of something terrifying appears in front of your eyes. Last couple of times you slept, remember, there was actually, like, almost like a, a low, rundled, gro um, kind of growl that you heard. Okay. Um, this time, so, as you toss and turn and try to get yourself ready to sleep and you begin to doze off this time there's a bit more it's like it lasts for a full two seconds what you see is the massive head of a ginormous white tiger with glowing blue eyes leaping right at you and its mouth is like opened and literally you can hear like a as it's like about to like engulf your head like you, you like visualize this thing coming down on top of you and that's the moment that you're like ah! woken up suddenly it's like always the same right as you first doze off at the second you're about to lose consciousness is when it happens but this time you definitely got a sense of what it was this ginormous white albino tiger that had a flicker of glowing blue on its fur and huge glowing blue eyes and there was a really weird, familiar smell that went with it that you can't put your finger on. Like, you know, like when you wake up, you can smell it. It's still in your nostrils. And you can 
feel the warmth of this tiger's breath like ghosting over you as you wake up like it's not here but it's so vibrant that you're as i said there's a smell in the air that reminds you of something that you haven't smelled for a very long time but you don't know what it is you can't place it and as i said and there's like this weird mist of steam in the air like something huge just breathed out with the cold air that there is floating around here it's like the breath the mist of its breath is still right there in front of you mm. yeesh god <laughs> well good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> okay um once again if you wish awkwardly and uncomfortably you can try to go back to sleep <laughs> yeah I mean it's not after a, you know about 15 minutes when I'm aware that it's like sure that it's not actually attacking me I'll try to go back to sleep okay um, I mean it, it does take you a while because it's it's more that it takes you a while to trust yourself to be allowed to kind of like because as soon as you start to close your eyes all you can think about is as soon as I start to doze off this thing's going to be here and it's not uh. until you actually get like tired enough to lose consciousness and just drift off all by yourself that you actually manage to go to sleep. Okie dokie. Well, you're all snoozing when suddenly you are woken loudly by Beecham yelling, Get up! Get up! You idiots! Come up. Spring to my feet. Okay. Um, as you wake up and look, Beecham is standing on the top of the cliff looking down it um so make sure um where you guys are right this second um so you kind of wake up and glance around the gold chest is there but the dwarf isn't and Beecham is pointing down the edge of the cliff okay okay All right. okay so um you rush over there and basically it would appear that the dwarf has left the gold where it was um, seizing the moment, jumped down off the edge of the cliff and is making a run it. for it. Right. Damn it! Like, How hand. long have we been asleep? Um, you asking Beach in the question? No. Like... Um, you guess not that long. Okay. Great. I mean, it's, you know, it's... The moon... Let's just say the moon is not much further over than where it was when you fell asleep. And that's where we will leave it for the <laughs> I night. I was about to say what I, I was going to do, but okay. Hi there, I'm Gorbad. Welcome to the Orc's Nest. I'm the Dungeon Master here on How We Roll, and if you'd like to follow me personally, you can do so on Twitter, at Gorbad. Check out thedmblog.com for all things Dungeon Master and Dungeons and & Dragons related. And, of course, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash gorbad. Also, guys, don't forget to keep up with all things How We Roll. Follow us on Twitter at How We Roll. Check out the website, www.howweroll.com. And make sure you follow us on YouTube as well. Cheers, guys. Shagget here. On How We Roll, I play Radovan Rainier, War Priest of St. Cuthbert, who just so happened to author a new academic book that's coming soon. It's titled Libido Rectification for the Required Propagation of Arconis' Depleted Men at Arms. Or more affectionately titled, Mandate Number 2 and You. You can follow me on Twitter at Ineb underscore Convos for upcoming book excerpts. Just to get the hype going. You know, push up the sales. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, I'm the Dragon Spooker, and I play Marlo Rayfell, monk and resident badass for How We Roll. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so using at Dragon Spooker. Or follow my Twitch channel, which I sometimes stream on. Twitch.tv slash the Dragon Spooker. Hi, thanks for watching another episode of How We Roll. I am Jane Ivana, and this is my lovely cat, Norman, who really doesn't want to be here right now. You can follow me on Twitter at Jane on Twitch with a zero. Shh, don't tell him he doesn't like birds. Um, I stream occasionally on twitch.tv slash Nirvana, so you can find me there. And I guess that's all we got. You got something to say? Nope. Peace, suckers. Bye.